Hello, it's Pete here. Welcome to the vlog. Today we are going to be looking at Sizzix Chapter 4 stamp sets. Some of them are layering, some of them are not. All of them are fabulous. We're going to be showing you some wonderful techniques and at the end we'll be sharing some of the inspiration, some of the cards, some of the projects that we've made using them. And today I'm going to be using three. First of all, we're going to be using Drawn Frames by Lisa Jones. We're going to be using this one, this lovely layered floral, and it is called Blossom Heart, also by Lisa Jones. And finally, by the lovely Olivia Rose, we have Watercolor Flowers. This one is a favorite of many of us, um, but we're going to be looking at these. We're going to be mixing and matching as well, showing you a couple of fun techniques. So let's get going. So, of course, I'm going to be working today on my wonderful stencil and stamp tool and you'll notice this mint green piece here. We're going to tell you all about that a bit later but at the moment it's all about stamping. So the tool of course has two functions for stencils, layering stencils and for stamps. Stamps we're concentrating on today. So I'm going to take my project and you can see I've already pre-stamped this. I've pre-stamped the background so we've got that lovely heart there and we've also applied the sentiment. That was from an earlier stamp set in chapter one. So, so go back to the Sizzix catalog, go have a look online and see all the different stamps we have available because as much as possible we make sure that they all work together. So there it is. As you can see I've stamped in black. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this little powder bag. It's kind of a, it keeps a sort of a chalk in there. So it means any oils from your fingertips or any residue from stamping, it doesn't pick up for the next thing that I want to do. We don't want, we don't want that to transfer because I'm using my Blossom Heart set. And let's open this one up. And you can see that I stamped initially with this one. This is the first, but we do have two other layers. And this is where this tool really comes into its own because what I want to do now with this stamp, I want to make sure I get registration absolutely perfect because if you're using an acrylic block, you don't have a second chance at perfect registration. With this tool, you have a second, third, fourth chance. So that's now in place. I'm going to place the stamp plate into the hinge and lower it down. Now just by pressing that, these are cling stamps, so that means that the stamp adheres to the plate. And let me just switch this around slightly because I want to take my embossing ink pad. This is a clear ink. It's embossing ink which means that it is quite sticky, quite tacky, so whatever you're using, in this case I'm using embossing powders, is going to adhere to the stamped image. So we'll make sure we get plenty of ink on there, bring it back in and bring the stamp down. Now with stamping with, with inks, if it's not exactly as you want it, you can reapply it. You can go two, three, four times until you get the image that you want because you're always going to get perfect registration which is incredibly important. So let's take that away. I can just take that off the hinge and I know that the embossing ink is on there. You won't really see that. Now you see I've laid my project down onto this sticky grey sheet. This is an adhesive sheet. It's a low tack adhesive which means you can place your project down and lift it away easily and it lasts and lasts and lasts but if it does start to lose its tack you can replace them. We do have other sheets. So let's take my funnel tray and I'm going to start with gold. I'm going to use some gold embossing powder. This, as you can see, is Sizzix embossing powder. And I'm going to sprinkle this on here. So if any oils from my fingers or any stamping residue actually appeared on there, we use, we use that chalk bag to make sure that we get rid of the majority of it. So that's in place and it won't really show until we start to heat this. And I want to show you something quite important about our heat tool, our Sizzix heat tool. So if I pop that to one side and take my heat tool, you'll notice it's dual speed. So we have a two and a one. The higher speed 
is great if you want to dry off any acrylics or any watercolors you have. Um, but the low speed, now people normally use the high speed for heat embossing. I use the low speed and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, because when, when you're applying heat to embossing powder, it takes a little longer with the low speed. But the reason that I use that is because it doesn't bubble up so much, it doesn't mottle. You tend to get a smoother, cleaner image from using the lower heat. So you have to judge how far away you hold it from your project. That's very important. But just by applying it slowly, you need to be patient with this. And it's, it's quite wonderful. It's always a joy to see that embossing powder start to bubble, start to heat, start to bring in that gorgeous opulence which we get from the metallics. So I'm just working it around slowly. And there we have it. Now that's, that's my gold. So we've got that in place. And let, let me just move that around in the light. And I think you can see the sheen that that gold gives off. And that's quite classy. I like that. I like that opulence. Um, one of the things when we're heating, when we're heating cardstock, another thing to consider is it can warp. It can warp. So um, that can be problematic when we talk about stamping. So you'll see I've used my funnel tray and I can just pop it straight back in there like so. Now, sometimes, uh, obviously, if you do use a heat tool and it warps, just put it under a couple of books. It's good as new. But with a sticky grid sheet, which we have with our system, when you apply it like so, it's going, to, it's going to stick down flat. Even though it warped initially, it's sticking down flat, and that's because of the sticky grid sheet, and that's why one of the reasons we enjoy using this system. Now, next up, I'm going to take my second layering stamp, and I'm going to get my registration. I can see where it needs to sit. That's quite clear. I move it around until I get it perfectly, perfectly in position. There, ready to go. So let's take the stamp plate, pop it back in the hinge, and down it goes. And again, a little bit of finger pressure, and your stamp is in place. Now, I'll remove this this time. I'll remove it from the hinge, and I'm reapplying my embossing ink pad. Then we'll put it in place. Bring it down. I know the registration is still there because we've got a very accurate hinge, we've got a very accurate stamp plate, and more importantly, a very accurate registration system with our sticky grid sheet. So the ink has done its job. I'm just going to take that away, and this time we're going with silver. So let's take my silver embossing powder and I sprinkle that over the top. Make sure every area is covered and then simply tip that away. Now there's my silver powder and I can use that again. Obviously tip that back into the pot and we'll bring in the heat tool once more. So this time it appears grey at the moment but I'm going to use again the low speed. As I said the low speed gives you much better results. And there it is. You can see it start to pop. It becomes almost dimensional. It's gorgeous. Really, really nice effect. So it's important as well to keep the distance between the heat tool and the card consistent for best results. But a little bit of practice, you, you can judge that yourself, I've no doubt. 
and there we have it that's it that's just the gold and the silver and as you can see I'll just fold it along the crease line as you can see the card has warped slightly that's what happens when you apply heat to cardstock but if I pop this under a book or something it's going to come out absolutely fantastic and let's show you some examples of where I've done just that this there are two colors of green so same card same design different colors those are green embossing powders again Sizzix embossing powders then we have this one which is two shades of pink and then finally I've got two examples using just different colored inks these are Adirondack pigment inks from Ranger um, it's just really delicate really beautiful very very usable of course uh, if Valentine's is around the corner or you just want to send a card to somebody you care for it's a perfect option so next up we want to be looking at these two collections that's drawn frames and watercolor flowers uh, this one designed by Olivia Rose this one by Lisa Jones so I'm going to take I'm going to take some of these stamps um, and you'll notice these big the big black areas oh my word they are so much fun and I will show you why in a second so let's take the stamp plate off my tool and I'll put a piece of white card down now this is bigger than I need but I can always trim it down to size afterwards so let's use my little chalk bag to make sure I'm working on a lovely clean surface um, I'm gonna place that stamp down somewhere somewhere like that and bring this down it's gonna adhere to the back of the cling stamp and it's ready to go now with, with, with stamps obviously we usually use dye based inks or pigment inks that are specifically designed for stamping today I'm going to use distress inks now you might not think of distress inks as stamping inks because they don't give a really clean image but that can be used as an advantage as well but we're going to do something a little bit different um, I'll bring in some of my distress minis and I'm gonna choose some colors because we're going we're going for a kind of a poppy vibe here so this is ripe persimmon I'm gonna add that then I'm gonna take another shade I'm gonna go with mm, candied apple so this is a this is a red ripe persimmon somewhere between a red and an orange this is a deeper tone and I apply those thus now if I were to stamp with this straight away it's not going to give the cleanest image it's going to give a wonderful effect but not a clean crisp flat image I'm going to take a spritzer now this is just clean water and lightly I'm going to spritz where I've inked so that's going to do something quite special when I place that down now I hope you can see here you can see the water starting to spread and as I add finger pressure it moves to the edge and what and what will happen when I take that away you've got this mottling it looks like it's been watercolored and that is the effect that I'm going for 100% absolutely so let's remove that just for a second and I'll take a paper towel and I'll dry that off so it's ready to go again now I'm going to take the same stamp and place it down roughly there it it doesn't really matter at this stage um, because it's a journey we're, we're exploring so I'm going to bring that down press it into place and there it is ready to go 100% I'm going to choose some different colors this time first of all I am going to start with that right persimmon which I did last time but towards the other end I'm going to choose picked raspberry now this this is a pink it's a red it's a lilac it's one of those that sits right in the middle and it goes so well with all your reds and oranges let's spritz again just lightly over the ink put the stamp plate in place and bring it down again let's watch what happens when I start to apply that finger pressure wow again 
really cool watercolor effects. Um, that's the sort of thing, you know, it's one of those techniques that is different every time. It's one of those techniques whereby you can control it to a degree with a little bit of practice, but it's always going to be random. You know, there are bits here which are, which are not completely covered. That one has a lot of water and it's just really cool. Now, let's take, let's, let's take another stamp and we're going to use the lovely, well, I think of it as a poppy. It doesn't, not necessarily so, but yeah, we're going to go with this one. Oh, now at this point, once we got it in place, let's just take that away from our tool. And I want this to dry up before I apply the next layer of ink. I just want to make sure that is bone dry. So you can use your high setting as well if you choose. Great way to make your paper stay flat is work on both sides, not just one side. To get that to level out, and then let's bring in my tool again. Place this anywhere, anyhow, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing today. I'm gonna to place this lovely stamp from the collection over the top of that inked floral. Bring my stamp plate down. And this time now we've used Distress Inks. This time I'm using Archival Ink. This is uh, from Ranger. So make sure. The great thing about this as well, if you, if you ink, if you stamp and the stamped image is incomplete or broken up, which used to happen back in the days with stamp blocks. Uh, now, with this tool, so I'm just gonna do that lightly. Oh, you know what, that's, that's broken up here. That's not where I want. So what I can do, because I've got this tool, is I can reapply it until I get the image that I want. And there it is. So it's very forgiving. If, if you don't have a lot of experience in stamping, then this is absolutely the way to go. Next, I'll bring the same flower over the other inked image. Bring the stamp plate down. Apply the black ink. And so we're just repeating the same as last time. Make sure you've got plenty of ink on your stamp. Replace the stamp plate and pow, there it is. Really cool, and you can see what I've done. I've slightly offset that. It doesn't have to be slap bang in the center. In fact, you know, the, the more that you can offset it, the, the cooler the effect that you're gonna get, in my opinion. But there you go. Now, that is looking at the watercolor flowers. Let's, let's talk about these. Let's talk about these. These are the uh, drawn frames uh, by Lisa Jones and they come in so handy. You can use them in, with so many other stamp sets, so many die sets. It's just one of those things that will stay in your stash that you will use time and time again. And I'm gonna bring that in place there. This is the large rectangular element. So that's in place. Again, inking with the black. And this is a very, very fine line. And you know what? In the old days when we used to use the stamp, the old days doesn't seem that long ago, does it? But when we used to use a stamp block with something fine like this, if you start to rock it back in two, the pressure kind of, it changes the image. It'll be lighter in some places, it'll be darker in some places, it's thicker in some places, it's thinner in some places. That is all taken care of now because of this stamp tool, because when the stamp plate comes down. At the point of contact, it is parallel with the base. So just a little bit of pressure and you're gonna get a perfect, now see how clean that is? Wow, wow, where have you been all my life? So that is looking pretty cool so far. But what I've done now, what I've done, I've stamped 
the same thing onto a piece of stencil film. And stencil film, if you've not seen this, we, we get 10 sheets in a pack. It's great for inking, st uh, for stencils, for masks, when we're using inks, distress inks, or anything like that. So it's one of my absolute go-to products. And I'm gonna place that. So I've cut, you can see where it's stamped, and I've cut just inside the stamp, and I'm gonna offset that ever so slightly and bring in, I think we'll go, I think we'll go today with Broken China, one of my favorite blues. Uh, I'll be using my multi-tool with the ink blending head, and I'm just gonna start blending on the outside and bring this in just gradually, adding ink. You don't need to go in too heavy. In fact, going in too heavy can be problematic. So I'm going very light. I'm, I'm actually, so we're darker at the bottom and blending it out as we go up. As you move this in this gorgeous circular motion, what you'll find is that the ink actually fades as we move this forward. So it's gonna be darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. Same here, and we're gonna come in at the top, just from that corner. Again, moving up, and this is why it's so important that the, the flowers, the, the, um, the reds, that they were actually dry before we start doing this. And there we have it. I'll just take away that stencil now. You see that lovely subtle effect and the way that it was offset? I think that's really cool. Um, now, one other thing, one other thing. There's one more effect I wanna do. And I'm gonna use the top of my, or the smooth side of my stamp plate and apply some of the ink from my Distress Mini to that before spritzing it. Now. If I take a palette knife, you can see this is care worn, it's covered in acrylics, oh my word. Um, and I'll pick up some of that ink, like so. And I'll start to create a little splatter effect, which, which kind of goes with that whole watercolor vibe we were looking at earlier. There we are. And then all you need to do, once that's dry, is take a piece of kitchen paper, Remove that from the lid, it comes straight off. You don't need to use any cleaning agents, of course, it's water-based. And the same thing with my tool. Just let that dry, trim it to size, and it's ready to go. And let me show you something that I created a little earlier using this stamp set. Um, so we have the same thing, just a simple sentiment added to that as well, put on a pattern background, uh, that one says sending happiness. Um, some more examples using um, using these. Again, this one, now you see we, we've combined, again, the drawn frames and the watercolor flowers. That is, oh, happy day. And finally, do what makes you happy. So we've combined, again, two different florals, two different heads, um, a die cut circle, I think, I think they're really neat. I think it's a lovely, lovely set. And it's one that you're gonna have a lot of fun with. Um, so let's, from here, we're gonna take a look at some of the other stamp sets in the range, some more examples of things that you can do with them as well. Now, one, I, I love a pun. I love puns, I really do. Um, but Jennifer Ogborn, who's a wonderful designer, she, she's the queen of puns. I think I'm the prince of puns. She's the queen because these, this is terrific. Um, and it has thinking of brew. You're my cup of tea. That's magnificent. Oh, Jen, that's a stinker. But I love it. But I love it. You're my best tea. Have a terrific day. How about that? Um, and of course, there's two little wonderful hand-drawn teacups. And here's an example of some of the ways that you can use that. And these are two which I stamped 
onto pattern paper and then just cut around them using a craft knife or using your scissors very simple just black ink this one that's magnificent you can see what we've done here we've I've actually applied distress inks to cardstock stamped on top of it and then again cut around it and we've done that lovely splattering effect which we saw earlier and finally same kind of thing thinking of brew now because you've got these stamps you can create a lovely background layer like that. And we did that. And we used the stencil film again to cut around the shape of a teacup and add the blue to that one. And finally, now this, this is a work in progress. I haven't done anything with this yet, but I've made my own tea bag out of stencil film. Uh, and I've put some lovely um, sequins in there, stamped the legend on the front. You are my cup of tea. I'm trying to think of a good reason to use this in a make i'm sure I'll come up with something um but that's another set and then the fifth set in, in our collection for chapter four is hedgehogs now unfortunately i don't have the artwork but these are the stamps you've got two wonderful hedgehogs uh you've got a die which says sending hedgehogs you've got two hearts and so on and so forth and this is the kind of thing that you can let's take the one let's look at the two together so you can have these facing off you can use the the, um, the block colors as well uh, to create any kinds of effects you want either using distress inks uh, here I've used I've actually used archival ink and then finally just the one using some of the hearts again lovely lovely little set uh, really really cute and you can see all of these are quite different but you can use them all together there's no reason that you can't take the hedgehog set and combine it with the drawn frames or maybe one of the florals really really cool um, now before before I mean there are so many techniques that we could have done that I haven't shown you but I mean we're gonna save those up for our next video perhaps um, but a lot of the techniques are down to the fact that I'm using this tool, this stencil and stamp tool. And in case you're wondering why I'm saying stencil, in case you haven't seen this before, well, of course, this is what turns it into a layering stencil tool. Um, and if I can show you a set, this is a set, you may have seen them before. This is called the Hummingbird set. And what we've got inside, if I open this up, are four different stencils now layering stencils nothing new but but what is new what is unique what is special about this particular set if i take this hummingbird and place the holes over these pegs that is going to give me registration that is going to keep the stencil in place exactly where i want it when i've inked through I can check it, I can lift it off, I can replace it, it's going to be in exactly the same place. I can, even if I want to look, quick peek, I can lift it up like that, it's going to stay in the same place. It's all about the registration. So we've got four different stencils there. And this is layer one, this is your background. Now you can use this or you can omit it, it doesn't really matter. Then we've got layer one and two. This combines the first two stencils and they are numbered so you know which is which. Layer one, two, and three. And finally, layer one, two, three, and four. Um, ways of using it, obviously card making, scrapbooking. This is just a little frame. This is using layers two, three, and four. So we've mixed, missed out the background layer there. Um, another one. This is, a, this is a butterfly, uh, same system, same layering stencils, different design. This one's slightly, obviously, more monochromatic, so we've used a lot of browns and grays with that one. Now, let's take a few more looks. Uh, this, again, that's a butterfly. We've, we've got a rainbow effect working across there. You can have so much fun with these. Um, some wonderful, wonderful sort of tropical leaves there again this time i've used half the stencil so i've trimmed it down to size to make that lovely card background and finally this gorgeous bird now this bird has a background for this one i've omitted it you can just play around with these you can have so much fun but when we talk about 
the stencil and stamp tool, I think it was important to show you what the stenciling element is about in case you haven't seen it. But check the website because you know what? There are so many different sets of stencils, so many layered stamps for every occasion. And it's something we're gonna be adding to all the time. And this tool is the perfect hub to use those wonderful products. Um, I know that my colleague Alexis, she's done a wonderful video talking about, talking about some of the stencils coming up as well. So check that out. In fact, go back to our website, look at our YouTube channel, see some of the wonderful inspiration from all of your favorite designers. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I love working with stamps. I particularly love working with layered stamps. I particularly love working with Sizzix layered stamps. Uh, I hope you had fun. I did, and I'll see you again soon.